Our permanent underground fires, coal fires, may actually explain why we haven't heard from aliens, at least partly. It could explain why intelligent alien life could be quite so rare. We do know the reason that we have coal is because of the way life evolved on Earth. That 360 million years ago, when plants started defying gravity and grew upward, it was because they made lignin a compound that allowed them to have these stiff structures. However, bacteria and fungi didn't know how to eat them yet. On land, forests fell down and eventually became the coal deposits, which can have billions of tons of coal in the same place. They just piled on top of each other. That was not limited to just land. When plants and stuff like algae decayed in the ocean, when they weren't, you know, eaten by bacteria and fungi, they became our oil today. Both of those allowed us to have this very rich energy source which kickstarted mankind. In fact, even nuclear power is basically a steam engine. Another civilization would need to have some kind of natural fuel. Sure, we can make it, but it took us a very long time to get to the point where we could make fuels out of stuff like hydrogen. If that is the case, if that is required for an alien civilization to get started, they would not just need to be on a planet that had the right conditions for life. They would need to be on a planet where there was this evolutionary accident where it allowed fuel to be made, as fossils, of course. Now, it does get a little bit weirder. That Carboniferous period was also a mass sequestration event, meaning carbon on land in the atmosphere ended up underground. That triggered a global cooling cycle. This isn't the only thing that causes ice ages, but it's been a big part of it. We are essentially burning these fuel sources and returning that carbon to the atmosphere and warming up our planet. So we will have an ancient Earth eventually, if you liked heat. That is by far not the only thing we got right. There's also selectively advantageous instability. We have relatively long lives. We get to transfer knowledge to our children. Think about squids and octopi. They might be extraordinarily intelligent, but they only live for a couple of years, so knowledge doesn't really get passed down in the same way it does for us. Instability is the thing that gives us cancer. So if you have a number of mutations, that means that you can have children who have a chance at adapting to the environment, but it also means you age. This unique combination of just the right instability, just the right length of lifespans allowed us to build our societies today. Now imagine trying to get all of that right. You have a planet with the conditions for life. That's not super rare, but you also need to have the genetic quirk where a fuel source was created. And you also need to have a species with just the right combo so that they can pass knowledge down to their offspring. It is mathematically improbable that there's no intelligent aliens out there, and I'm pretty certain that we'll find all sorts of life. We did already kind of put life on the moon, and probably Mars. Not just tardigrades, because those were crashed into the moon, but bacteria and fungi go along with the stuff we send into space. There'd be a panspermia situation. But life is quite contagious. Now, the real answer to the Fermi paradox is probably just that it's such a vast universe. We're not talking to each other. We may never talk to each other. The life is definitely out there. 